When we get older, we absorb less vitamin D, and it's all our skin's fault. You see, as we age, our skin contains less 7-dehydrocholesterol, which is what converts vitamin D from the sun. So we end up receiving sunlight, and then this 7-dehydrocholesterol receives that sunlight and converts it into vitamin D3. As we get older and we have less of this, we just naturally absorb less vitamin D. So as a result of that, older people end up producing about 50% less vitamin D than when they were younger. So we have to look at, okay, why is it so important to supplement vitamin D if you have a deficiency? We're gonna cover four very important things. We're gonna talk about metabolic function, we're gonna talk about muscle, we're gonna talk about mitochondria, we're gonna talk about aging and telomeres. We'll dive on into it. Now, I wanna make just it's kind of this disclaimer first, right? Vitamin D supplementation isn't going to be a magic pill for you, okay? If you're deficient, it's going to be highly effective, but if you already have sufficient levels of vitamin D, you don't get an additional benefit by adding more vitamin D. So anyway, let's jump into this first one, metabolic function. So over the age of 50, vitamin D could be playing a huge role in how we utilize glucose, which can help us maintain a healthy weight, decrease that central adiposity and sort of that apple shape that we're really trying to avoid. Okay, here's what happens. Vitamin D regulates calcium absorption. Well, calcium regulates glucose utilization and glucose function in the body. A lot of people don't realize that. They think vitamin D, calcium, bones, and that's it. So when we consume some glucose or some sugar, here's what happens. That glucose comes in, okay, and it hits that pancreatic beta cell. And that pancreatic beta cell then goes through sort of a depolarization. Well, calcium likes a depolarized cell. So then calcium floods into that cell. And once the calcium floods into that cell, it creates sort of this fusion to where the outer membrane sort of binds to the inside of the cell. This is called exocytosis. And there's an image on the screen right now that really just shows it rather simply. This exocytosis is very common, and what ends up happening now is now insulin can leave the pancreatic beta cell. So you see how this whole process with calcium and glucose is all really tied together. If we didn't have calcium because we didn't have vitamin D, we wouldn't be able to secrete as much insulin and our glucose function wouldn't be as good, and that can contribute to insulin resistance and to, well, gaining weight. It's interesting though, because there was a study that was published in the journal Steroids that in addition to sort of this indirect calcium pathway, found that if you directly stimulated the vitamin D receptor on the liver, it regulated glucose uptake. So we have vitamin D receptors that are on our livers, okay? Now, in vitamin D activates that receptor, it regulates glucose uptake. What the mechanism is there, uh, we're just now beginning to find out, but we can see clear as day, okay, there is some correlation between having sufficient levels of vitamin D and appropriate glucose uptake. So perhaps some of the physiological, like metabolic changes and decline that we see as we get older are a result of our inability to synthesize as much vitamin D. Therefore, maybe it's better to be consuming some vitamin D supplements or at least consuming vitamin D rich foods. By the way, before I get into the next one, you can get some really good vitamin D rich foods, things like uh, sardines, good quality eggs, you, you know, good quality fatty fish is gonna have good amounts of vitamin D, things like that. I put a link down below for Thrive Market. So if you're looking for a way to get kind of groceries that align with the style that you're eating, they're a great option. So I put a link down below for you to save 25% off a Thrive Market membership, as well as get a free gift. So they're an online membership-based grocery store. So instead of going to the grocery store, you click a few buttons, you sort by what kind of foods you want, and then they get delivered to your doorstep in a day or two, it's that easy. So that link is down below. They're a big supporter and sponsor of this channel, and I appreciate their support and appreciate your support in checking them out. So that link is down below in the description. Now, moving on to the next one, mitochondrial function. Mitochondrial function may sound boring in like sophomore biochemistry, but the reality is mitochondrial function was what allows you to have energy and feel good and that vitality. Good healthy mitochondria, good healthy levels of energy. Dysfunctional mitochondria, dysfunctional energy. So the International Journal of Molecular Sciences did something really wild. They created a cell. They created a cell that did not have a vitamin D receptor. Now, a lot of the cells within our bodies do have vitamin D receptors. So they sort of artificially created this cell that did not have a vitamin D receptor. And they found that this cell, when it went through its normal function, ended up having tremendously high levels of reactive oxygen species. So a lot of just inflammatory response, a lot of just uh, free radical damage that was occurring. They also found that it had poor mitochondrial integrity and it ended up going through premature cell death. So basically, a cell without a vitamin D receptor is a pretty decrepit cell that can't function very well. 
Now, as we get older, mitochondrial DNA becomes very important. Okay, mitochondria have their own DNA. And as we get older, we go through a lot more mutation. We go through a lot more cell division. Okay, so if we have cells that are being exposed to high levels of reactive oxygen species, then we run an even higher risk as we get older because during these mutations and during these divisions, if there's a lot of reactive oxygen species, that's when dysfunction occurs. That's when you end up with messed up cells and messed up mitochondria. So the more that we are deficient in vitamin D, the more we are potentially putting our mitochondria and our cells at risk during its natural sort of mutation. So again, a little bit of it is hypothetical because we're having to extrapolate from various studies, but it's very powerful, and we look at how important vitamin D is with other mechanisms in the body, it makes perfect sense. Anyway, moving on to the next one, muscular skeletal function. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about bones, okay? We know that vitamin D is good for calcium absorption, good for bone health, yada, yada. But as we get older, one of the most important things that we can pay attention to is our muscle mass. I don't care how much muscle you have on you, muscle amounts to 40% of your caloric burn during the day. So when it comes to staying healthy and like kind of a, like staying trim, well, you want a good amount of muscle so that you're burning more calories that way. But also, when you look at just decline in health, a lot of times it's associated with sarcopenia. You see correlations with muscle mass going down and just instance of just, well, poor health. You see, it's been seen that vitamin D deficiency leads to the activation of what is called ubiquitin proteasome. Okay, the ubiquitin proteasome is what triggers protein degradation. Now, that means the breakdown of protein. So when this ubiquitin proteasome is activated, Basically, your body is saying, okay, we need to start breaking down proteins within the muscle. It is a sign of sarcopenia and it's seen in older populations. But how does vitamin D sort of combat that? So, well, there's a study that was published in the archives of osteoporosis. And this is kind of interesting because they took a look at 128 elderly people and they put them on 10,000 IUs of vitamin D per day, okay, for a few months. Now, that is a pretty sufficient amount. That's, that's a good amount, right? And after six months, they found the group that had the vitamin D had a significantly higher amount of muscle mass than the group that didn't. Okay, so somehow we're seeing vitamin D having an effect there. Now, it could have to do with the fact that the muscle can contract better with calcium, right? There's this whole process within the sarcoplasmic reticulum in order for uh, myosin and actin to actually kind of like slide that sliding filament theory and allow a muscle to contract, you need calcium. And if you don't have that influx and efflux of calcium, the muscle can't contract. And the muscle can't contract, you don't have mTOR stimulation. If you don't have mTOR stimulation, then you don't have protein synthesis and you don't have muscle. Long story short, vitamin D is playing a pretty important role in that. Okay, in addition to supporting your bones. So forget bones for a second. You're probably getting enough for your bones unless you have something else going on. We need to be paying attention to muscle. Anyhow, I digress. Let's move on to the next one. This one is probably the most intriguing when it comes down to just aging and longevity. Maybe you've heard of telomeres before. Okay, what telomeres are, they're little strips, little, little sheets of DNA that are on the end of our cells. And every time our cells divide, a little bit of that telomere, a little fleck of that DNA kind of flecks off. Okay, well, over time, those little flecks of DNA are going to shorten to the point where there's no more protection. There's no more protection from these, I'm just going to call them flecks of DNA because they don't really uh, encode anything but they're very important. Okay, so these flecks of DNA aren't necessarily encoding material, but they are protective material for the proper cell division. Without telomeres, our cells are gonna be highly susceptible to damage. The DNA is gonna be susceptible to damage. And as we get older, our cells have clearly gone through lots of division over our lives. Well, they're going to be much higher risk for going through weird mutations and all kinds of things that aren't good. So where does vitamin D come in? Well, the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition found an association with higher levels of vitamin D seem to equate to longer length telomeres. Well, okay, correlation does not equal causation, so we need to look at sort of the mechanism here. Well, why is this probably occurring? Well, if you look at a study that was published in the International Journal of Obesity, they gave subjects 60,000 IUs of vitamin D per month for four months, and they saw that they had an increase in an enzyme known as telomerase. Now, what telomerase does is just like you would think. Okay, it allows those telomeres to sort of regenerate. It kind of helps repair the DNA that had been sort of flecked off. So you, in essence, can sort of reverse the telomere shortening. Now, there's something called biological age, okay? Biological age is different from your chronological age. Like, you could be 65 years old, but have a biological age of 35. And a lot of that is measured by how long your telomeres are. And some of that is reversible. Like I've seen people like, within anecdotal situations that have gone from a biological age and gone backwards in their biological age, even though their chronological age is getting larger, right? They're getting older. So it's very interesting. 
The reason this becomes extremely important is as you get older, you are going through more and more and more cell division. Okay, cells are trying to replicate, they're trying to repair. Okay, and if your telomeres are short, you end up running the risk of mutation, running into problems and potentially tumors and things like that. We don't want that, right? And if telomeres get so short that the important part of the DNA becomes exposed, a cell knows to self-arrest and stop replicating and dividing altogether because it says, oh my gosh, I have no protection. I'm not even gonna put myself at risk. It's like if you are you know, living in a really bad neighborhood and you have bodyguards that allow you to just go throughout your daily life, but then all of a sudden your bodyguards all fall, you know, they fall off the face of the planet or they call in sick. Well, you're not gonna be able to go about your daily life. You're just gonna say, you know what, forget it. I'm gonna stay in the house. And that's what a lot of times these cells end up doing because they don't have the ability to mutate or they do. They have the ability to divide and do their thing, but they're afraid of mutation because they don't have the protection of the telomeres. So it's interesting how cells can even sense that. Cells can sense that telomeres are shorter. So with telomerase, we end up improving that and potentially cells are just going to be able to do their job better. So as always, keep it locked to here on my channel and I'll see you tomorrow.